Today we're going to look at the Roland TR-808 drum machine. Um, so if you've picked up one of these recently and you're not too sure how to get around it, then um, this tutorial's for you. So um, I advise you uh, get your drum machine set up and uh, follow the steps and uh, you'll be making beats in no time. So um, turn on your unit by hitting the power switch on the top left. Give it a second to initialize. And uh, what you should be seeing is um, if you use your function knob, you want to put that all the way left to the pattern clear. And uh, for this example, let's make sure uh, memory location 1, which is um, represented by the LED that's solidly lit at step number 1 here. Uh, let's uh, consider that our blank canvas. So what we want to do is clear that. Um, what you can do is you push your basic variation switch into the middle so it's um, over the top of A, B and then if you hold the red button down here uh, it'll clear it all. You'll see all these little LEDs, first part, second part, A and B all flickering and what that's telling you it's doing is running a memory clear function on all the uh, parts of that particular memory location which is at number one. So once it's done that you can put uh, your function knob onto first part and your memory location should start blinking which is giving you an indication of what tempo the actual unit is at at the moment. Uh, if it's not blinking check your DIN sync switch on the back of the unit, on the rear of the unit. Uh, that might be set to external. So check the unit sync on the back. It looks like a MIDI port but it's not. It's a DIN port. Same cable just uh, different functionality. So a DIN port is just sync, so if it's set to uh, external then it's waiting for a clock source to come in and uh, tell it what to do. So make sure it's on internal. At the moment I've just flicked it so it's on external and it's solid. So we want that blinking so that'll start blinking when it's on internal. Now what you want to do is put your basic variation switch uh, to A for this example. Um, that'll just give us one bar. If we have it at A, B it'll give us two bars. Uh, you can just have the second bar, or you can just have the first bar, or you can have both. That's how that works. Um, there's first part and second parts to each memory location. We'll get into that a little later. Um, so let's make things easy. A basic variation on A, and hit start. Now your LED should be running across each of the uh, numbers on your um, on your steps there, across the steps, which is 1 to 16, which equals 1 bar. Uh, you can change that. You can have double time if you like, so uh, if you use pre-scale 3 like I do by default, um, that's pretty much standard 4-4. Four, four. Um, you can go double time by selecting 4, or you can even you can experiment which, whichever suits you best, but I, I like 3, so let's just go for 3 now. I'll show you what you can do with the others later on. Um, now what you want to do is go to the instrument select knob and uh, choose a particular instrument you want to start with. For this example, let's start with BD. Uh, all these little initials around the instrument select knob correspond with the sounds across the uh, 808's um, uh, front. So BD equals bass drum. As you can see here, the actual instrument names have got the enlarged initials that correspond to each one of these little uh, instrument um, uh, abbreviations here. So BD, we'll just start with a straight 4-4 kick drum and a snare drum on the 5 and the 13 and a closed hi-hat, so CH for closed hi-hat and actually let's put an open hi-hat on 15 let's put a clap, CP for clap on the 5 and 13 now we'll use the accent as well, the accent's quite funny um, the accent is here, that actually drives more emphasis into whichever step that you put the accent on. So for this example I'll put it on 15913 and uh, see if you can tell the difference as I increase the accent. So you can adjust all your decays and all your tones. Um, okay, that's pretty good. So let's go to the basic variation. Now let's flick that over to B. 
Now what, what that's doing is that's now giving us the option to have a second bar. So we can program a very similar pattern to what we did on variation A. And we'll just make things real simple. Bass drum, snare drum, clap. Alright, so that's pretty simple, that's pretty much what we wanted. So let's put the basic variation into the middle, so it's set to AB. So yeah, it's just giving us that little bit of variation, so if we want more movement in each one of those little memory locations that, we, uh, that we're programming, um, that's what uh, variation's there to do. So once we've done that, we can actually go on to uh, some other different things. You've got low toms, uh, which also double as congas. So even though it's got LC, MC, HC, you're actually programming the low tom, mid tom, and high tom. The rim shot uh, doubles as a clave. You can't select CL. Um, I don't know why they did it like that. It's actually confusing. Clap can become a maraca. And I'll show you how the rim shot also doubles. You can use the tap feature on here. You don't necessarily have to step program everything by turning on these little lights, turning them on and off. You can actually tap this here. Um, and you can, if you make a mistake, you can just turn them off. So the, uh, the way you enter with those little um, sounds in is quite easy, quite easy. And so you can hear the rim shot. You can double it up to a clave. And uh, once you've done that, there's another interesting part that I'll show you. And that is that on the back of the unit, you've got three different sounds um, that can be used to trigger an external uh, synth or a keyboard if it's old enough and has that sort of feature of um, what they used to call trigger in. And um, the 808 actually has cowbell, uh, clap and the accent on the back as, uh, as output jacks. So what you can do is get a guitar jack and plug it into the back of their trigger out section uh, not to be confused with the actual independent output on the back for the sound of the cowbell but the actual trigger out section and what you can do is you can actually trigger a synth so I'll show you how that's done I've actually got a Juno 6 here off camera with a bass patch um, just programmed in on it so what we'll do is um, we'll put in some cowbell steps We'll just use basic variation one for this example. Select cowbell, CB, and let's just tap in a cowbell. And you can't hear that because I've got it turned down. So I'll go to the Juno. And so let's turn down the cowbell now so we can just hear the Juno. Alright, so that's kind of cool. You can actually trigger three different uh, keyboards with those, um, those types of triggers that you have on the back of the 808. That being a clap, the cowbell and the accent. Um, okay, so let's go to um, memory location 2 and let's put the uh, function knob to pattern clear, hit the red button, also basic variation AB, let's clear everything in memory slot 2 and then go to the first part and now hit play and now let's program something different into memory slot 2. Using the tap I've got the bass drum selected, BD for bass drum and let's just tap away. We just want basic variation, I think. Let's just use A, so well. Let's just put this in. That's good enough. Maracas on clap.
symbol, CY for symbol. Now, the reason for this particular demonstration is that I want to show you what first and second parts do. Um, I, I, I don't use them that often, but they might be useful for other people out there. So anyway, let's, let's show you how to get access to the second part. What you do is you use the function knob, click on the second part, and you'll see everything kind of disappear. Now what you're meant to do at this point is second parts are actually meant to help you decide on how many steps you need. Like some people might use pre-scales and want three, four timing, and that's all fine. Um, what the second part does is actually help you fill in the amount of steps. So rather than 16 steps, it might you might just want 12 steps, or you might want something like 18 steps, or you might want 24 steps. So you add the difference that you're missing from the first step to the second part, or you can actually make the first part 12 steps and the second part 12 steps. It's up to you what you want to do. But what we want to do in this particular instance is uh, we want to add the amount of steps, and that is you hold the red button down and choose what is the last step across here. So if you're using 3, 4 to be 12, but in this example we just want an extra bar added to our 16 step bar that is on the first part. So the second part we're going to add 16 steps. Now it's actually added the second bar on there. And unlike variation, once you've done it, it you kind of, you, you, there's no going back. So the second part is now there waiting for us to put something on. So let's put a kick in, BD. I've already put the accent down. Symbol. Oh, I think the first part is missing an accent. So let's go back to first part and add the accent. Back to second part with the snare drum. And the second part's missing a clap by the sound of it. So CP. All right, that's pretty good. So now what we can do is we've, we've just made two patterns. Let's make one more, um, just quickly. Pattern clear all the way, so you're not function knob all the way left. Select the memory block you want to clear. Basic variation in the middle, which will cleanse all parts of that uh, memory memory location and then back to first part hit play select your instrument uh, basic variation on A so we're going to get one bar unless you want to put it in the middle but I want one um, so there's the, the kick and snare I'll add an accent and let's add a rim shot, which is actually set to clave. So put that down. Open hi hat. Closed hi hat. All right, so that's that's it. Now, if you put this thing into pattern play mode. What that does is now allows you to bounce around from those patterns that you've played um, in uh, real time. And then what you can do is you can also select a fill-in. So what you can see here at the moment in pattern play is currently I've got the last pattern that I worked on selected, which is number three. We program something at number one, we program something at number two, and we also program something at number three. Now previously I also programmed some things in up here which work exactly the same. So you can actually uh, use 1, 2, 3 and 4, as marked here, for um, automatic fill-ins. So for example, every 8 bars or every 16 bars, you have another a variation play come playing in. The 808 will actually play it automatically. And then at the end of that, it will go back to whichever um, pattern you, were, you, you had on beforehand. Or you can change it, and I'll give you an example. So that little pattern we just made then... and fill in. And then back to the other one we made, which has a slightly different pre-scale, time scale.
but that's all right. We can fix that quite easily. You just go back to edit mode, hit play, and then hit the step prescale button. All right, so now they all should be playing in the right scale. So put it back to play mode and tap the, tap the fill in. Select a different pattern and then a fill in. So, and then back to this pattern. So you can actually make a little sequence of things. Now there's, I think we've covered pretty much everything. So there is the last thing and that is actually sequencing a little performance of like just what we did just then. And that is to actually put this in, into compose mode. And then once you're in compose mode, uh, this instrument select now becomes an actual uh, composition uh, memory location. So you can see the little numbers around the actual instruments, 1 to 12. So uh, they are now 12 spots that we can record uh, little performances in. So the way you want to clear that is you just hit, if, if you're in composition mode, the uh, the knob all the way right, roughly uh, 3 o'clock, hit the track clear mode, and then what you want to do is make sure, uh, for this uh, example, we're in number 1, which is the same uh, knob location as where the accent is, and then uh, as soon as we hit start, it's going to memorise every different step that, we, um, uh, that, that we're playing. And I'll give you an example. So... We'll start with um, bar two. We'll go for uh, three, bar, four bars, then we'll do a fill in and then come back to bar one. Sorry, bar three. But uh, anyway, you'll see what happens when we play this back. And one more fill in. And then back to bar one. All right, so now if we put this in compose mode, it should play back what I just uh, recorded. remembering exactly what I did and it should go to bar one in a second after the next fill in. Yep, clockwork. You can actually just put it back into composition mode if there's a bar that you missed or if you came in too early with something and you can just go back over um, those locations and just amend them by brute force really, that's the way it works. My buttons aren't always uh, too responsive, but that's uh, that's the 808 for you. Cheers.